Hello, my name is Luby, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Last time, we were put into a torturous situation, you could say, and we're continuing off of that. <laughs> Let's go. The days since then have passed so quickly that time seems to slip through my fingers like water. Every time I try to talk to Zune, she's been out running errands with Misha. I feel as if she's avoiding me. I'm not surprised. Of course, it bothers me, but I think the way she's acting seems pretty natural. Then again, it's not like I've been through this before. Whenever I can't find Shizune, I end up running into Misha, and when I do, I ask her to help me with my signing. However, she always ends up squirming out of it. We're leaving after today, so I'm determined not to let her escape this time. You know, she shouldn't be trying to escape teaching since she's training for it. I mean, come on, Misha. <laughs> Once we head back to school, we're probably going to have to start grinding through more student council affairs in preparation for school restarting. I want to brush up on my signing as much as possible by then, even if it's a day's worth. Come on, it's pretty much just having a couple sign language conversations. You do that all the time. Actually, you're doing it right now. What? <laughs> really, Hee-chan? That's funny. Misha temporarily stops her unconscious signing in order to wave her hands in front of her face in denial, but then quickly resumes gesturing everything that both of us are saying to no one in particular. Hee-chan, you're so persistent. Suddenly being interested in sign language again. Could it be that Hee-chan wants to make a career out of it? That's not fair! That was my idea first! You should be careful, Hee-chan! Times change too quickly! By the time I decided I want to be a sign language interpreter, they had cell phones that people could type out whole paragraphs on! Amazing! N not very good for me, though! As if she knows that another deferral isn't going to cut it this time, Misha changes her tune pretty quickly to a more apologetic one. I'm sorry, Hee-chan! I'm just... So tired, especially lately. Even though being with Shishan is fun, she has way more energy than me. Teaching on top of that would be too tiring. I don't have that much stamina, sorry. She doesn't seem very tired, shouting the same with her usual cheer and vigor. I know it's wrong of me to keep pestering her like this though. Actually, Shishan and I were planning on going shopping today. It's her last chance to pick up some souvenirs. Souvenirs, huh? I almost forgot that I was on vacation. I understand what you're saying. Teaching doesn't seem so easy. Hideaki asked me to teach him how to sign, and I was unbelievably lost the whole time. Well, uh, I wonder how it'll work out for you when you become a sign language teacher. You can't get tired too easily doing that. Yeah, right, right. I hope not. Hee-chan, I'm kind of worried. But souvenirs, so... Some other time, Hee-chan. <laughs> Do you want to sketch you something, too? Just because I understand doesn't mean I don't want her to teach me. I suppose I can't press her any further now, though. Even I'm bothered by how selfish it would seem to do so. I give up. No, don't get me anything. I'm serious. Don't surprise me with a funny shirt or something, okay? <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> it's a threat. Slipping on her shoes, she yells goodbye to the otherwise empty house and opens the door to leave, letting a cool breath of fresh air into the hallway. A tuft of dark hair peeking from the doorframe tells me Shizune is waiting for her outside. Good morning. Misha translates for me beyond the doorway, and Shizune turns around to give me a small wave. Even though it's different from her usual offhand greetings in the smallest ways, there is an unmistakable hesitation there. It leaves me with a vaguely empty and distant feeling. Dot dot dot. Hee-chan, you're up early! Am I interrupting a conversation? I was trying to get Misha to teach me how to talk to you, but I guess I was being impatient and it can wait. You two were planning on going shopping today anyway. Having Misha there, I forget to sign my words as I say them. Unfortunately, since Misha moved to fill the doorway, Misha is behind her. This brief misalignment in her positions means that what I'm saying is totally lost on her. I don't understand you at all. <laughs> there are things I want to say that I can't put in a way she would understand, and there are entire conversations that she could have that she could have that would go right over my head. I want to tell her now that it won't be that way for much longer. Instead, I just say never mind and tell them to have a good time, then wave them off. It seems like everyone's out for the day, so I sit down in the biggest and most comfortable looking chair in the living room with a book. Not a sign language book, but one of the novels I checked out of the library my first week. Life of Pi, perhaps. That was so long ago, I should really start chipping at that pile of books I borrowed, or at least return them. Sixteen pages in, Jagoro walks into the room, the throat killer, a stack of papers in one hand and his sword, 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 sword twirling idly like a baton in the other, casually shaking water from a recent shower from his hair. 
Upon being seen doing something so ungentlemanly, he freezes like a deer in the headlights and slowly moves on to smoldering with powerful but baseless fury as he sits down on the couch a few feet away. This is only the third time I've met him, and I'm already starting to feel nauseous on reaction. I guess in a way, this could be considered a kind of charisma. I haven't said anything, and he already seems less than pleased. It's likely a bad idea to provoke him, and just talking to him may count as provoking him. However, I can't help thinking of the alternative solutions that could play out. Let's say I don't open my mouth at all and walk away. Maybe to go read in my room or outside. That would definitely go down as an unforgivable insult. He'd probably tell me to hold it and destroy me. Either way, not too polite on my part. Uh, what are you reading? The draft for my autobiography. It's a story of a man who wakes up to find an uninvited guest in his living room, sitting in his chair, and reading shallow literary trek. I barely started reading the book. I don't even have an opinion on it yet. I can already see how this conversation is going to play out, so I might as well try to steer it in a different direction. Uh, where's Hideaki? Do you even ask questions rudely? Disgraceful. But aside, why are we even asking such a stupid question? How would I know? Am I my son's keeper? You're his father. <laughs> well, you are his dad, and it seems like he does live here, so... <laughs> but I guess I can't say that, tempting as it is. I give up. I already tried to make Saul talk with him and failed. It's like trying to talk to a brick wall that also hates you. That's my cue to leave and sift through my wallet to see if I have enough money to go to a movie. As I'm about to stand, I have second thoughts. I'm too tired to go through trying to smooth over my problematic situations by trying to continuously walk away from them. It's hypocritical of me to get upset at Misha for trying to defer things when I even run from my own girlfriend. When Jagoro attempts to stop me, I'm almost glad, even though I no longer have any intention to leave. Wait. He says it with plenty of authority, but nothing else as if it's just a particularly commanding afterthought. Only a very powerful, a very arrogant person can tell someone to hold on in such a manner. I'm sort of impressed. Now I feel like I read the line wrong. You're in the student council with Shizune, aren't you? What's your job there? I don't think there are specific roles other than president. Shizune is always trying to round people up to help out here and there. Usually we might get like one person to pitch in, but otherwise the three of us do whatever needs to be done. It's crossed my mind a couple of times around when I first met her that Chizune's disquietingly analytical stare might be because of her deafness, but it turns out it's a trait shared by everyone else in her family. And that's okay with you. Uh, why wouldn't it be? You, Shizune, and that pink-haired girl. <laughs> Is that really your entire student council? <laughs> with a student council that small, they wouldn't even bother to hold elections. I'm gonna take a guess and say you didn't join the student council. Shizune drafted you into it. You said you do not know exactly what your title is. That makes sense. I suppose if you weren't even elected, you couldn't be expected to know. After all, if you're not elected, you aren't really anything. <laughs> no one is going to respect a student council like that. An unelected body of three people trying to scrounge up the equivalent of temp workers? It must be a sorry school of three kids having a tea party can handle every issue. What's how small it is have to do with anything? If a student council get things done, isn't that enough? It's not just a game, either. Maybe we should actually come to the school one day. If you get there on the right days, you might be able to see what Mishizune is able to accomplish. Do you think that I have so much free time that I can afford to waltz over to your boondocks and watch my daughter's feats of self-aggrandizement? I have never been more disgusted in my life. What you're saying is they might as well not have a student council, but the fact remains there is one. And Shizune got elected to it, and for her it isn't a meaningless position. In fact, she works very hard for it. You sound like someone who voted for her. <laughs> No, I wasn't there for that. <laughs> you didn't even vote for her. Oh, well, besides that, why don't you ask Hideaki about this? Chizune has wanted to be a high school student council president since middle school. She would have read him all the practice speeches wasting his time. For what reason? This whole time, he hasn't even looked up from thumbing through his manuscript. It's getting increasingly infuriating. Because it isn't a game. We don't run the school, but it's not like we're just playing at it and not taking it seriously. I wonder if it's so wrong to not be a purist. I have been to your school. Really, the students there. I can already think about a million things you might say, and I'm preparing for my heart to sink by hearing any of them. It's funny, they're probably things I've thought before. They don't even have cleaning duty. That wasn't what I expected at all. He's also wrong. They do. I, I should know. I get to skip out on it since I'm in student council. The concept of being wrong confuses Jigoro. I should take this opportunity to go on the attack. It's really odd that I'm thinking this way about a simple conversation. <laughs> You're playing mind games. It sounds like the last time you were there was a really long time ago. If you can leisurely write some memoirs, you can talk to Shizune now and then. Don't you think that she has stuff she's proud of? 
That's how young people are. We have things to be proud of. If you're writing an autobiography, you should get that. Such an opportunity, and I blew it. I don't know how I was expecting him to react. Maybe introspectively, but Jigoro only grows angrier by the second. Yet as he does, he also seems calmer, in a way. More sure of himself and in control. Who do you think you are to assume that my life is so easy? You haven't even read my biography, yet you're able to tell how I should handle my affairs, including dealing with my own daughter. You could never understand. Even if I were to get up from this couch, walk over to you right now, and punch you in the forehead with brass knuckles with a condensed edition of my life story on them, leaving my biography imprinted in your face, you would not understand. For 12 years, Shizune did not even talk to me, even though I hired multiple tutors and interpreters of all sorts for her to try to get her to become normal. It isn't as simple as you think it is. If she does not want to bother me, then fine. I assume that's normal. When was the last time you talked to your parents? It has been a while and I feel ashamed. More so that it caught me than in how easily I could have dropped my parents a phone call or sent them an email, or even a letter and haven't. This knowledge only makes you feel more ashamed. I thought so. If I wanted to see my parents, I couldn't. This is different. You aren't that far from her, it's one trade right away. That is enough. No means no. You are very persistent. If only it was about something that mattered. I can't see what you have learned from my daughter aside from that and how to backtalk people. Is that it? The answer is yes. I wasn't this persistent or argumentative before meeting Shizune and Misha. After all, prior to meeting them, I just experienced a small death. It's a mystery as to why I refused to join the student council in the first place. Possibly it was from trying to get away from their nagging so much that I was able to get my energy back. It's a cute idea. I think again about why I'm still here. Arguing with Jigoro was pointless, yet I think I almost look forward to it. And he's right, I can't understand him. Even if I did, he wouldn't care. I'm a louse that crawls in a whale, wholly insignificant. He has a confidence that I don't have. Shizune does, and it could be the reason why I'm here now. In an almost shouting match with her father, it's because of some of that bravery that's rubbed off on me. However, I don't have anything to keep it going. Still, I hate him. I don't know what I can do. A few months ago, I think I would have punched him and let the consequences play out as they may. But now, I can't risk it. If he were to hit me back, he'd likely kill me. So in the end, the only thing I can do is look at Jigoro in silence, knowing that I have no reply, and hate him, and feel completely at a loss. Oddly, he takes it as defiance. Hmm. <laughs> Fine, then. Have fun with that. Picking up his sword and using it to pull himself to his feet, he turns and casually saunters out of the room. I want to throw my book after him, but I'm happy to finally be alone, even if I'm not in the mood to read any longer. That guy's a dick. <laughs> what was that about him trying to make her normal? A bit rude, no? Our return trip to the school keeps getting delayed in one way or another. Shizune and Misha come back so late that there's no use even leaving, and we end up staying another day. The morning after, we miss the train by a single minute, and the next two don't arrive. We miss the fourth train because I wandered off to get a drink in the meantime. Shizune wasn't very happy about that one. By the time I finally get back to my room, I feel so tired, even though I spent most of the ride back sleeping. I can't say it's only because of today. This seems like a familiar symptom of traveling. It's not the first time it's happened. And immediately goes to sleep. If no one is beating me to it, I could do a thesis on it, maybe get in a medical journal. Returning from a trip syndrome. Not very creative. I fall asleep before I can think of a better name. Returnal syndrome. Whew. A loud knock on my door wakes me up only a few hours into my nap. Yeah, just a few hours. I'm annoyed because I had just been in the middle of a dream that I can't remember, having been woken up in the middle of it. But I'm sure it was a good one. I briefly wonder who it could be, but it's not like I get many visitors. So I'm sure it's Kenji. I hope he's just rolling out the welcome wagon and not going to hit me up for money again. If that's the case, I'd almost be touched. It's Shizune or Misha. <laughs> not touched enough to fight off the urge to roll over and go back to sleep, though. Oh. No, I guess they didn't knock again. Huh. A few hours after that, I wake up again and immediately spot an envelope on the floor. It must be something that came in the mail while I was away. That's Shizune and Misha's department, so I wonder if they dropped by to give it to me, or maybe someone filled them filled in for them in their absence and told Kenji to pass it along. Ooh. Guys, it's the letter. <laughs> when I pick it up, any remnants of sleepiness in me instantly vanish. Even if the name of the sender wasn't on it, I would have known who it was from by looking at the envelope itself, realizing why it looked so familiar. If 
by recognizing the delicate handwriting addressing it. That's right, baby. It's time for the Iwanako letter again. It's from Iwanako. At first, I can't believe it, but it would be too hard for her to track me down if she wanted to. Of course, I hadn't thought that she would want to. She was maybe my girlfriend for all of five seconds. After that, we barely spoke to each other. It would be too easy to put this letter away somewhere and forget about it. A part of me wants to do that, or throw it away unread. Why I want to do these things, I don't know. It'll be easy to do them, easier than to read it. Sitting the envelope open with the tip of a pen, I'm surprised by the length of the letter that spills out. Um, I guess let's just read this again. Dear Sal, how are you? Hope you're well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year class got put together in class 3-1 for the final year, so... We're pretty comfortable right from the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. The mood among the third years seems to be very anxious about the final exams, even though they're so far away. Teachers are badgering us about it all the time, even old Mr. Tachibana, who is, by the way, our homeroom teacher this year. Would you believe it? I was sure that he'd retire after a second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about studying for exams. I think things like that are the main reason why the mood among the third years is so nervous. I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well even though I've always fared reasonably well in exams. The small talk makes me feel nostalgic. It's almost like I'm in the hospital again. Every now and then Iwanaka would drop by and give me the gist of what was going on in the class that even then I had an inkling that I would never return to. It's so weird to think we're already seniors, isn't it? Time has really flown past. I wonder where it went. The new first year seems so young and somehow really innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt that there are things I should have said after the incident back in winter. I really regret that I wasn't able to say them in person, and I have no excuse for it. The truth is, the times when I visited you at the hospital made me worried about you, and I'm not talking about your health. You seem to become more distant and disheartened. It was natural after something like that happened, I'm sure, but somehow I got the feeling that you had given up on something back then. Happiness, maybe? I wanted to somehow express my feelings, but the right words didn't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I'm really sorry for not being able to support you when I mattered the most, even though I like you so much. At least now, finally, I can be more honest. What a convenient time for her to rediscover her sincerity. Well, even as I think that, I know she's right. Distant and disheartened is a good way to describe it, and maybe I had given up too. It weighs my heart when I think back to when I was lying in the hospital, feeling so bitter when she finally stopped showing up. I wasn't surprised, and I had no right to be. How could she not stop coming when it was the only expectation I had of her? She dropped by only for all of six weeks after the incident. If I drifted away from her, it was because I could feel her already moving herself away from me the moment she showed up. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I had just said something. I hope you managed to get back on your feet on your own. Now that the distance between us is also physical, it feels more final, somehow. I wonder if we'll meet again. Perhaps for the best if we don't. Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means, write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Iwanaka. It's a strange feeling. I know I'm never going to hear from her again. If she really wanted to keep in touch, she wouldn't have picked a medium like snail mail to do it through. If she could get my address, then my email or phone number wouldn't have been... I wouldn't have been much more work had she wanted them. This is only a goodbye. <sighs> I exhale, only just now becoming aware that I have been reading with pated breath. Now who's being distant, Iwanako? But maybe it really is for the best. For her to pick up a pen and write this letter to me, it could only be because she felt guilty about how things ended, that she was hurt by how we floated out of each other's lives, making me feel a sort of wistful happiness. I almost want to thank her, and I only don't because I know she wouldn't want me to reply. Ugh. There's a knock on my door, then it opens anyway about a millisecond later. I forgot to lock it, stupidly. Sup, man? Why's your door open? I know that you just had a really emotional moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and barge in. I run to the door faster than it's probably medically safe for me to do so I can prevent Kenji from seeing the mountains of pills just a couple of feet away from him, blocked from his sight only by the door. Then there's a letter I'm holding. If he asks about it, I don't think I can make up anything convincing. About two feet away from him, I realized that his vision is so bad that it was probably never an issue. He didn't even see me about to practically tackle him back through the door frame. Hey, what the hell, man? 
What are you talking about? Your room has a billion locks on it, yet you just barge right through other people's doors. You didn't even wait a second after knocking before you tried the door. It was like simultaneous. You were already opening the door while you were knocking on it. See? That's exactly why I have all those locks. It's a cold and uncaring world out there, a gatecrasher's world. Now you also understand. I just taught you a valuable lesson, dude. Knowledge is power. Why are you yelling at me? I'm a hero. Look at you. You didn't even lock your door. The average woman could have killed you a billion times already, then replaced you with a female clone indistinguishable from the original. It almost happened to me. Ignoring the latter part, since it's too confusing. It's funny you should say that. He was unable to stop me from tackling him head on, yet apparently a woman could have killed me a billion times. If this man is a hero, we're all doomed. What's it you got there? Somehow he's able to see the letter still in my hand. With how I've been waving it around, that's no surprise. I fold it back up quickly, but take care not to whip it behind my back or anything else. That'd be too suspicious. It seems like I'm jumpier than I thought about Ibanaka writing to me. Uh, I got a letter. Oh yeah, I put that there. I was sleeping, then I woke up because I heard explosions. I put on my helmet and then peeked outside to see what was going on, but it was just that student councilwoman banging on your door. It was the one without pink hair. She was knocking so loudly that it was obvious she was filled with murderous rage. Rage at you. Then she somehow sensed me behind her and I tried to escape, but it was too late. She caught me and started pointing at the door. I opened my mouth to tell him that she's deaf, but decide not to, for various reasons. I didn't really get it, and she got more and more pissed off like an old man trying to use a touchscreen phone. She was gonna kill me, kill me and replace me with a woman version of me, but then the sunlight reflected off my glasses and blinded her, saving my life. It was like, behold, optic blast! I don't care someone's glasses can be hurt by glasses. She used them too, so she should be immune to their death rays, but whatever. She gave me this envelope with your name on it and just left. Clearly, she was out for blood, so I lied and said you were away. I think you were away, right? I've been trying to ask you if you wanted to help me with my homework for a week now, but kept getting no answer. <laughs> Welcome back, man. Uh, thanks. Yeah, so she gave me this envelope and it had your name on it. I didn't want to hold on to it because what if it was a bomb? So I just shut it under your door when she was gone. I was going to tell you, but you got back before I could. At least it's not a bomb. Gee, thanks. I'm not going to help you out with your math homework because what if your math textbook is a bomb? He looks devastated, and also like he's considering the possibility that it really could be a bomb. I guess it's possible since no one really uses their math book all that much. I throw the letter on the dresser behind me and turn to leave, swinging the door shut behind me as I do. It collides against the tip of Kenji's shoe and bounces back open while he hops around for a bit, acting like it hurt way more than it should have. Before I know it, he's already inside my room. I'm powerless to stop him before he scoops up the letter, strangely ignoring the towers of pill bottles surrounding it. Don't just read mail that isn't your own. Come on, what is it? A love letter from your girlfriend? Did she include any photos? Sexy photos. Reclining against the dresser and paying no mind to the bottles he sends all over the floor. By doing so, Kenji quietly reads through Ibanako's letter. Even though it'd kind of be easy to just snatch it from his hand, no? The process takes seemingly forever, and with how close he holds it up to his face, it makes it look like he's trying to eat it. Who's Iwanako? Uh, my ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend, huh? This is the breakup letter, then. I thought they were a myth. No, I guess it is, but really, she's been my ex-girlfriend for a while. Anyway, I think I'm already over it. Kenji gives a thumbs up, clearly relieved that I'm not going to take this into an awkward direction, although I almost want to, since I told him not to read it. Yeah, that's a good attitude. It's alright. I had a bad breakup, too. But you can't let it get you down, man. I mean, just look at me. Uh... But hey, she wrote you a letter. If you want to get back together... <laughs> Sorry. If she wants to get back together, huh? It says... Right there, right your back. You should do it. Is she cute? For a guy who thinks feminists are working to enslave men everywhere, he really is interested in cute girls. I have a girlfriend. Besides, look at the context. She doesn't want me to write back. Just because that's what it says, that isn't what she means. That's what she wrote. This rockfish kid chick totally still wants you. It even says it right there. I read it. I know what it says. I told you, you have to look at the context. She said I drifted away from her, and everything there shows she accepted that. I think the reason she wrote to me is that she just wants to, I guess, part amicably. But we're done. She doesn't want to get back together or whatever you're thinking. As I think about it more, it sounds to me like I'm just trying to make excuses for myself. <laughs> That's not a good place to be. I'm positive that she doesn't want me to write her back. I can live with that. If I were to write her back and get a less than desirable response or no response, then I would just be crushed. Perhaps the fear of that is why I'm trying to justify my decision. It could be, but I don't want to think about it. The thought is oddly repulsive. Why is this such a big deal to you anyway? Because you should write back to her. She wants you to. I want to see what the response is going to be. Damn, it doesn't have to be a nice letter. 
That's cool too, but you could write an angry letter and call her out. That's my new attack strategy. I'm just gonna call a woman out. You should try it. Uh, even if she wrote me a letter, you have to understand what that means. Writing someone a letter is different now. It's not something you just do. Not in this kind of situation. You can pick up your phone and call someone across the world in an instant and talk to them almost like they were there with you. Or send them an email. They'll be notified instantly if they got it and can reply back just like that. A letter can be a personal thing, but she wanted to keep me at an arm's distance. It's not like I can pop over there and visit her. If I had her number, I could call her, or if I had her mail, I can mail her. If she really wanted to hear back from me, she would have dropped one of those in there. I feel silly for continuously reassuring myself that I'm not phased by Iwanako writing to me when it's so obvious that I am. It could be like a gradual thing for her. She might be too shy to call you up. I remember my girlfriend would always send me text messages because she was so shy. It was annoying as hell, man. I didn't really get shit about phones, so I didn't have the thing, and it turns out I had to pay for every single one. But I don't like phones, so I couldn't even call her back to tell her to cut her out. I did it anyway, though. I called her out. I even used a phone. It was literally the call out. I, uh, guess it was. Even if, even if he's right, it means that Iwanako still wants to keep her distance from me. She's not ready to chat with me comfortably. Why? Am I some kind of freak? I'm not reassured by her actions anyway in that case. Uh, maybe I am overthinking it, but I just don't know. Kenji can't think of anything to say to that, and the silence that follows is so awkward and thick that I start to count the seconds until he makes up a reason to leave and excuses himself. I miss her. Uh, your ex? Yeah. Even if she was insane, it was nice being with her. Ugh, my back hurts. If she were still around, I could tell her to massage it. I don't know how to use an oven either. I miss baked food. And we would go bowling in the hallway sometimes. I miss that too. I had to bowl all by myself during the last festival. You bowl in the hallway? You're gonna hit someone. Ah, uh, she used to say that all the time. Kenji sighs nostalgically clearly not appreciating just how badly someone can get hurt by slipping on a bowling pin. <laughs> Apparently, neither did his girlfriend since she bowled with him. What a strange definition of love, but I guess it's something. Maybe you should write her a letter. If she writes back, you can get married. Married? N no, 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 no. Okay, fine, but why not? You clearly like her even though you hate women. <laughs> Feminists! Not women. Feminists. There's a difference. There are non-feminist women. Damn, your discrimination is incredible. <laughs> Correlation doesn't equal causation. Even if she's insane and a woman, it doesn't mean she's a feminist insane woman. It's like how the absence of evidence isn't the evidence of absence. If it's true, then by the relative property, the presence of evidence doesn't equal the evidence of presence. Actually, I think it is, and I don't think it's called the relative property. No, shut up! It's mathematics. Are you saying math is wrong? I think he's wrong. <laughs> So even Kenji has someone that he likes. I'm tempted to ask why he and his ex broke up, or to dig for more information in general, but I shouldn't. Not only would it be prying, but he might reverse the question back to me. This conversation makes me think about Shizune, although the thoughts I'm having are scattered and wispy. Just questions. I wonder if I even had the chance to love Iwanako, and this whole situation with her still stings me, a sour note in the back of my mind. I like Shizune much more, yet it feels like I'm chasing her even now. I don't mind the chase, but I want to close that distance between us. Iwanako's letter is responsible, but I've also felt this way for a while. I've come closer, but it's not enough. I want to try again, right now. I tell Kenji to get out so I can change, and then head for the student council room. The grounds are mostly deserted today, which is a shame, because it's so nice out. No one answers when I knock. I try to go in anyway, but it's locked. When I pull my hand away from the doorknob, it's covered in dust. It looks like no one's been here since we left. Since I'm already out here and dressed, I might as well get something to eat in town. My wallet is back in my room, though. Whoa! On the way back there, I stumble across Misha sitting down behind the main building. Her eyes are closed in sleep, and she looks very tranquil. It's always been hard to picture her not constantly bouncing around or hopping on the tips of her toes impatiently. My first instinct is to call out to her and ask her if she's seen Shizune or if she wants to go to town with me, but now that I've seen her, I don't feel like disturbing her. I want to leave her alone. Oh, so she's just sleeping behind the main building? We're just leaving it at that? Okay. <laughs> I don't hate her new hair. It, it's, it is nice hair. It does suit her, but I miss the drills so much. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode of Katawa Shoujo. A nice little short half-hour episode, which I know still isn't super short, but hey, it's shorter than most of the episodes. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Katawa Shoujo. 
And, uh, you know, now that I think about it, we barely saw Shizune in this one. But I guess that's uh, part of the story. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.